Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Gaysford and we're back in Home Assistant. This video will walk you through migrating your current Z-Wave setup to uh, the brand new Z-Wave JS setup. Um, if you're brand new to a Home Assistant or you're brand new to Z-Wave, you can just use this as a setup guide for the brand new Z-Wave JS. Now I already have a Z-Wave video on my channel, but it is now out of date with this brand new Z-Wave JS, so do not refer to that one for the brand new setup. So Z-Wave JS came out over two months ago, so why am I making a video about it now? And the main reason was my old setup worked just fine. I was waiting for bug fixes because this was a brand new integration of Z-Wave and I was kind of scared of the migration for this. I didn't want to lose any of the support for my current Z-Wave or have some problems migrating them over. And before we actually get started, go ahead and install any updates if you have them. Just hop over to the supervisor tab, click on update, and then go ahead and let those install. Then once you have the latest and greatest version of Home Assistant installed, we're going to go ahead and take a new snapshot. And I know it just took a snapshot for the update, but I always like to take a new snapshot, especially with the latest and greatest version. So once you have that snapshot, just go ahead and save it to your computer. So before we go delete our Z-Wave integration, we just want to make sure we have our network key. So if you hop over to your configuration, you should have some YAML that looks like this. I have mine stored in a secret, but just make sure you have it. You want your new Z-Wave JS to use that same network key so that way your devices migrate over and be, are able to be used. At this point, you're going to go ahead and want to remove the current integration you have. It's just inside the YAML file, so just select it and delete it out. Um, this is something that I didn't do at first and it caused me to play around with it and troubleshoot it a bit, so it would just be a lot easier to remove it now. So now that we did verify we had the network key, we're going to go ahead and remove the Z-Wave integration by going to Configure, Integrations, find the Z-Wave, and then just click on it and remove. From there, it's going to be time to go ahead and restart Home Assistant then. So this is kind of the big anticipation part, so that's why we took the snapshot. It is now time to go ahead and install Z-Wave JS. So head on over to your supervisor, go up to the supervisor store, and then just find Z-Wave JS on that page there. Then once you have found it, go ahead and install it. Um, it took a few minutes for mine, but it wasn't like a crazy long wait or anything. And then once it's installed, we're gonna go ahead and turn on a few options, including the keep up to date. I just, something I like to have on my plugins personally. And then we're going to hop over to the configuration tab where we're going to have to specify our device and our key. I had my key in my secrets.yaml file, so I went ahead and copied it from there. Um, but go ahead and get that key. And then once you have that key, um, we're going to go back over to the integration. So hop back over to the supervisor, click on Z-Wave JS, and then select on your Z wave device um, i was able to, to just determine mine because the other device is a conbi and then go ahead and paste your network key in that next field in order for us to use our key we're going to have to convert it and to do that just remove all the commas spaces zero x's and it'll leave you with a nice looking clean key like this and you're just going to take that key and that's the one that you're actually going to put into that field at this point, go ahead and save your work and then you could go back over to the main page of the integration and go ahead and start it. Feel free to check the logs just to make sure you see that it actually enabled and things are looking good. At this point, I went ahead and decided to go ahead and reboot my Home Assistant once again. Um, then after rebooting, I actually saw I had a Z-Wave JS integration that I was able to go ahead and add. Um, I didn't know where any of the devices were initially just because they changed the names of the devices so I went ahead and just left them all at nothing or just the default and then just went ahead and moved on. Um, as you can see here I actually have two Z-Wave integrations. I have the old one and the new one and that is because I didn't remove it from my YAML file like I mentioned earlier in the video so make sure you go ahead and do that. Um, on top of that, um, once I did finally get the Z-Wave integration removed, um, the old one, it did take about 10 minutes for it to 
pull in all the new data or just reconnect to my locks and pull in that new Z-Wave JS data for them to be fully functional. But once everything had synced up, I was able to view my entities and be, was able to actually go through and fix the name of them. Um, on top of just fixing the names of the entities, you do are, have to fix any Lovelace dashboard cards you have or any animations you had using the old names or the old entity IDs. Um, it's a little bit of a hiccup, but it's not too bad. Um, it's a little bit of work, but at least you're going to be up to date with the Z-Wave and you're not going to be using the deprecated software anymore. And it's just going to be a lot better integration feeling and it's just going to work a lot smoother for you. Um, if you liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Um, I'm not crazy consistent about making videos, but I'm definitely working on it. Um, and that's going to be all for this video, you guys. Thanks so much for watching and giving me your time, and I will see you in the next one.